Greetings viewers. Thanks for joining me out in the shop today for a few minutes with the Tundra. I'm going to put this strut spacer on. I said before I'm not a huge fan of the strut spacer, but I got these new Bilsteins on here that a buddy of mine gave me. They only got about 25,000 miles on them, so I want a little lift in the front. I'm going to add a strut spacer. While I'm not a big fan, small one like this that gives you two inches for level. Uh, I'm okay with that. It's an inch and a quarter spacer. I would not go any taller than that personally. If this was a hardcore off-roader, I would get height adjustable struts and not do spacers, but this will be for mild wheeling, mild overlanding. It's going to be level now. It's going to have some 33s on it. And yeah, if you say, hey, that looks just like the wheel on the Forerunner, it's because it is the same wheel. Um, it pays to ask your local tire store if they have any discontinued wheels, because these are moto metal wheels that have reached discontinued status. And I got these for like 50% off of what they would have cost, excuse me, regularly. And by getting two sets, I even saved more. These are my 33s from before. You might remember them off of the black third jet. So these will be going back on the Tundra. Tundra getting a little facelift as far as a little suspension rise goes. So I'm going to take those bolts out, get that strut out. One thing I do like about this spacer, which is just a billet piece of aluminum, uh, you can pay 120 bucks and get these from a name brand manufacturer, or you can go on Amazon and order them for 50 bucks, like I did from a no name brand. It's a chunk of aluminum. You can't hardly go wrong. I like these though because the bolts go in from the top, makes it easier to put in. Have both wheels suspended when working with your front suspension, makes drooping it easier because I'm going to need to stretch this a little bit, I think. I'm going to get started on this. Like I say right now, it's just some bolts out. I'll come back and hit the high points. Now this little aluminum piece just sits right on top of your strut. Use the same three nuts you took off of your strut to put this back on. And you'll notice, of course, ah, as it falls over, this now, when you put the new piece on, where your bolts, your studs were coming through, it's going to move that. They have made this as such that you just turn the strut 180 degrees and they line up perfect. So if you're not following me there, let me uh, set this camera down. When you've got your strut on, say this is your frontmost bolt, after you bolt this on, you can't use that anymore. You turn your strut 180 degrees and it lines this up now with where your stud and nut were before and you'll run the bolts through so you don't have to disassemble your strut. Hope that made sense. I'm going to stuff this back up in there after I get these bolts on. Hang on. Fingers are greasy. Well, there's one extra step. You can see that sticks up above the surface of the spacer. So I'm going to have to take my grinder and grind the tops of these studs down so that I can get this to fit back up in there properly. So I'm going to do that real quick. Won't take a second. Okay, you can see on the top where I just went over and cut them off. I cut into a little bit of my spacer. I just want to make sure that I got them down nice and flush so they wouldn't cause any problem. I'm going to shove this thing back up in there now. If I end up with a struggle or a special trick for distance to get this up in, I'll show you. But I think they're going to go pretty easy. Uh, this just fit right up or fell right out when I took it out. So hold on and I'll be right back. Okay, here I think you can mostly see everything. Make sure you get your right socket for your new bolts that drop down through your spacer. They're a 16 Y. Now I got to carry an extra wrench in my tool because why a 16 of all things? 
So again, just turn your strut 180 degrees. I like to get one started in the top first. You don't, hang on, let me get this. Some bits, that's heavy. <laughs> and trying to hold it up and start the bolt here. Let me try a new way. I thought I'd go ahead and film it so you could see me fumbling with it. It doesn't want to cooperate, of course, because I want it to, and it's heavy, and stuff like that. Wow. Ah. Let me wipe my hands, <laughs> clean this strut off a little bit make this go on way too long the struggle literally is real here now i see that now if i can hold it with both hands that'd be teaching what does it line up with all right there. All right. Now somebody out there has a better plan than this and is laughing at me right now, but that's okay. Lost my washer. I might edit this out. <laughs> okay, come on now. Start in there for me. Oh, you son of a gun. Right on it. There we go. Holy moly. Now you can get a couple, three of those started, but you don't want to tighten it up on the back or on the front because it'll push the strut out. So let me get one more of these started. Hope you're enjoying <laughs> a little after. But you can see we're just turning the strut 180 degrees. Now it's lined up to go in. Now these are much harder to get started than I had anticipated them being. Let me check that alignment of the hoe. Okay, that's two. Get this third one. All right. Now I want to run these down enough to help hold this up, but you can see, ain't missing too awful much there at the bottom. If you get this too tight in the front, it won't let the strut push back as easy as you would want it to. So let me get a pry bar. Thanks for watching me fumble with that. I'll be right back. Okay, now you want to have your bolt ready to go through. Get you a nice pry bar. Find you a real good place to pry where it ain't gonna fall out. Test and see what you get, how much you're gonna need. I think I'm going to need more than I'm getting there. So let me see if I can get under another spot here. And get some better push. Uh, everything is so greasy out here because I get greasy. So I'm going to try. Set my big fat ass down on that. That is really really close tightening these top ones down just a little bit I need a little bit more here I'll bounce on it see if I can get it well I'm sitting on it it ain't gonna let me have it uh, hang on while I devise 
a better method. Okay, well, I hope you can see what the hell I'm doing here. Pry bar under here, uh, under the suspension. Hammer for leverage. Big fat ass on the pry bar for squishing down. Another pry bar under here. I'm gonna try and pick this strut up enough to make it go the way I want it to go. Who's with me that this is eventually going to work? I have a bolt on the ready. Of course, my pry bar is directly in the path of it. My hands are filthy. Ah, shit. Almost had it. You get the idea. I'm going to do some more cussing. I'll be right back. Well, after fumbling with that for far too long, I just took a bottle jack, turned it upside down, and am cranking it down to get my bolt in. I'm almost there. So, duh. Thanks for watching me struggle with that. I hope you got some enjoyment from that. I'm going to finish cranking this jack down. Push that down. Yes, it's excessive. No, it'll probably never be there again. But let me get that put in, and uh, I'll be back. Hang on. Okay, well, I got that one on. When you use the jack and the fender, don't forget to put a board up in there to help distribute the weight. I have this side to do. Absolutely just going to repeat that process without all the screw-ups. Second side always goes faster than the first, right? I'm going to hold off on this till I get it down on the ground with the wheels on it and all and show you the fruit of my labor and what you watched me dick around for five minutes for. Uh, it will you'll get to see that and then it'll be off to the alignment shop So give me a minute to get this all done uh, Actually, you won't even know it'll seem like I wasn't even gone Okay viewers pretty mushy rainy day snow melting away uh, In my opinion Time well spent the truck looks great man, I I like it. Generally, I don't really like an aftermarket wheel. Um, according to the level I threw on the bed, she's perfectly level now. Nothing should settle as this is all old springs. But yeah, man, I'm really pleased. I think it looks great. I got the yellow fogs in the front. This really gives it a good look. That TRD emblem really sets it off nice. I really think I made a wise choice with this level and these wheels and tires. Seems to go down the road just fine. Always remember though, when you add an increase in tire size, it'll decrease your braking efficiency and your acceleration somewhat. Not a big deal with the 4.7 though, man. <laughs> I love this truck. I think it looks great. Sim come out to congratulate me on how great it looks because he took the day off today. So I am super pleased. Oops, dropped my camera there uh, with how this all turned out. And now when I tow, I got my airbags on for uh, to level it back up. And I got the cups on there for him. So if I'm flexing out, it won't hurt anything. I think it's time to wrap this up and go have lunch. Appreciate you all. Check the links in the description. Hit the like and subscribe if you would please. I'm over 800 subscribers now. Woo woo! All right, that was me being excited. Appreciate y'all. Have a great day.